I'm Richard Zier from Rocket Science Audio and I'm here to talk about console maintenance. In particular, console maintenance on a Soundcraft Ghost. How do you repair a console like this? Now, the difficulty with a console in this price range is that it's constructed from a solid plate with everything where everything connects together as opposed to a, a typical professional recording console where there's individual channel strips that can be easily removed by a couple screws, lift them out, and you, it makes things very serviceable. This console is extremely difficult because of the price point that Soundcraft was going for to add a lot of features and quality into a, a five to seven thousand dollar console. They had to make some compromises and the compromises involve construction which makes it extremely difficult to service. So what we're going to do is talk about how do you service a console like this? How can you repair a console like this? It is possible. You have to, if you have enough room to use a console like this, you should have enough room to actually service this console. It's not very easy to haul it out and take it someplace to get it serviced. There's not many places that'll do that. You certainly don't want to box it up and ship it UPS. That's a real pain and there may not be somebody in your area that can come out and service it. So if you have any aptitude for electronics, why not do it yourself? And it is possible. And we're going to look at some things and show you exactly how to do that. First things you want to keep in mind though is usually the console doesn't break at all at once. So uh, a good thing to do is to keep, keep a notebook handy. Always keep a notebook somewhere in the studio so when you notice when something's not working you make a note of it because you're probably only going to want to service this console maybe once a year and because it's a lot of work and we'll show you in a little bit how to do this and you'll see why you only want to do it occasionally so you kind of make a list of all the repairs that you're going to want to do and you let that list accumulate till you say okay I've got a block of time when I can go in there and take care of some of these things. So here's my list right here that I put together the other day. And how I created this list is I have a, a spectrum analyzer in this computer over here and I run an output from there that I can run into every individual channel, every mic input, every line input, every tape return input, and then I usually take the outputs from the mix bus, run them back into the spectrum analyzer, and I can analyze, I can look at each channel and see how everything is working. I can look at the noise level, I can look at the signal level, and very quickly, from just looking at that, I can tell whether there's a problem with that channel and what the problem likely is. Um, some of the things that we deal with are um, mic pots. They're, they typically are, are one of the most problematic things. Um, this console has been serviced a couple of years ago. I actually went through and recapped the whole thing. Not because the caps were unusable. This console is, is only about 18 years old, which is not real old for an analog console. But uh, your, your caps will start to deteriorate after about 20 years. Depends on how much heat is on the console. We used to have a, a knee VR in a studio that I worked at and we recapped it every five years just because they kept the console on all the time and it just created an incredible amount of heat. I mean, the console heated the whole building in the winter time and we, they, so they never turned it off. They left it on all the time, which I think was a mistake because it just sat there and cooked those capacitors all day long and every five years you had to change um, every capacitor, every electrolytic capacitor in that console and there must have been probably, I'm going to guess, at least a hundred per channel and it was sixty channels so that's like that's a lot of six thousand caps um, so this this is not quite that many I think I changed uh, probably a couple thousand caps in here anyway and they like I say they weren't completely um, gone by any means it was still usable but they, they start to deteriorate after about 20 years and it's a gradual thing so you'll notice after a while but when you when I replace these caps the main reason I did is I want to put in a higher grade cap so these are all capacitors in this console are all Nichicon fine gold Muse series capacitors which are a high quality audio specific capacitor and I also upgraded the op amps and 
took out the TLO-72s, upgraded those to Burr Brown 2134s, and we upgraded the, all of the, the NE5532 op amps to uh, LM4562s, and um, anyway, that's, that's a whole other project. We'll talk about that another day. But um, we added, I'll add a lot of features on, which I'll, I'd love to share with you if we have time. But the main thing we want to do is, how do we get into this console? How do we service this console? What can we do to easily get at it? So let's, let's just take a look at this. Where do we start? So we're going to start by taking everything out of the way, taking these speakers out, the monitor out, making some room so we can lift the console straight up and then we can take the bottom off it and get at what we need to service. These cables here are optional. We can take these out or leave them in depending on if we want to test the console and keep everything plugged in. It might be easier. It might not inhibit anything. The main thing is the power cable in the back. Um, we want to have that hooked up so when we have the console apart, we can kind of test things before putting it back together. It's a lot of work taking this apart, so you want to make sure everything's working properly before you put it back together. Okay, so we'll just start by taking things out of the way, unplugging things, taking them out of the way, and then we'll get lift the console up. Okay, so I've got my four bolts out. The four bolts out, two here, two in the back there, further up, and so. Now the console is loose. Okay, it's loose off the stand, but there's still there's four feet on the console which drop down into holes. So to, to get the console to be able to move on the stand, to stand it up, I'm going to press it up. Okay, so it weighs about 120 pounds, so not too bad. But just lift it up out of those holes. In. There we go. If you got two people, it's always going to be easier, but if you don't have two people and you got to do it by yourself, it is possible. Just be real careful when you're doing it. Once we've got the console free, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it forward and kind of center it on the, the stand and then lift the front up, and it should rest right on the back side once I get it up. So slide it forward a bit, and then stand it up, straight up. Yeah. <sighs> like so. Okay. So you can see the console is standing upright by itself right now. It's freestanding. And barring any earthquake, it's it's going to stay standing. But I'm, I just happen to have a chandelier right here that I'm going to attach some chains to and drop one down. I'll show you how, once I get the bottom off. I'm going to attach that onto here to keep it from rocking in case anything should happen. This is Southern California, and you never know it could get earthquakes anytime. So just to make sure that this doesn't drop, I'm going to reinforce it while I'm working on it because I could have it opened up for several days if I get interrupted. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking all the screws out. We've got Phillips screws all along the top here. There's one row that goes down. There's a bracket in the middle. Other than that, the rest of them are on the outside. We're going to remove this bottom plate here, which will give us access to everything. I like to use these. These are just jar caps here. They come in really handy to keep the screws in. So I'm just going to go along the entire console. Take these out, just take a couple minutes, remove this whole bottom of the console. If you have an electric screwdriver, this can go easier, faster. I'm really old school though, I'm an old analog guy. I don't believe in power tools.
actually use a candle to heat up my solder and I'm just kidding. As I said before, if you don't have the stand, you can do this, but you have to rest it on the floor. And you could put a couple 2 by 4 fours down, rest it on there. And again, the reason you want to prop it up is because you've got the power cable down here, which sticks off the back of the console. Okay. Now, one thing that you also probably want to watch out for when you take this off is a headphone jack on here. Um, this is something I removed because it's uh, I considered it totally useless and a, a really bad idea to have a a jack that's normaled shut in your monitor path. Uh, seemed convenient at the time for the Soundcraft engineers to put that on there, but to me it seemed like a real bad idea for for a lot of reasons. Okay. So we can just remove this, take it out of the way. There we have it. There, now we can pretty much get at everything. Now what we're going to want to work on is these channel strips. And so the, the easiest way to get at these, um, I know, I have already know that I want to replace the mic pot on channel 1. So um, I also know five, channel 5, and I think these two down here have to be done, um, 15 and 16. So it's a matter of taking these ribbon cables off, which, which are pretty easy really. You just pull these ears out like so. kind of pops right out, like so. Okay. Then these, um, these are for the, the mutes, and we'll pull those off as we go for the ones we want to get out, because they'll, they'll get in the way when we want to lift these cards out. Down at the bottom here, there's a little on each each module. Ooh, I'm starting to go over. Yeah. Okay, so it's about time that I, I put a bracket on this. Taking the bottom off makes it lean, want to lean this way, which is not too cool. If it falls, it's not going to come this way, it's going to go that way. So, anyway, I can feel that right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and put my chain up. So I've secured this with a chain for the time being. I just happen to have a chandelier, a heavy duty cat, uh, wrought iron chandelier on the ceiling, which I can run a chain down, strap it around the frame, and to stabilize the console while we're working on it. Um, in your situation, you may not have that. Uh, you may need to have some kind of wood framing or something to prop up. Um, both sides of it just to make sure that it doesn't doesn't fall while you're working on it and if you have it on the floor it's probably less volatile um, but it's easy to work on it here on the stand so this is where we're going to keep it for right now okay on the bottom here of each channel strip these are the cards with uh, all the jacks in them and to take these out we can disconnect the, the top card from the bottom card this, these are little strips that just pull out either end. You can only have to pull out one end, either or. It doesn't matter if you pull it out from here or from there. It's about the same either way, getting it back in. Um, the bottom, if you need to change your uh, with your jacks, if they wear out, um, these can be easily removed by, um, on the other side, I'll, I'll show you from the other side how you remove the, the jack screws that hold the jacks. There's five, four or five jacks on each one. And including the mic. Okay, and I also need to remove these, th this cable going all the way down, which is, again, this is our mutes, our auto mutes, or manual mute busing, mute groups, however you want to look at it. Um, you might have to, if these are held on, you might have to cut these, a few of these little 
ties that hold the cables in place just to get them out of the way and put these back when you're done you can put them every few don't have to be every module but every few modules just to kind of hold it in place um, everything else is pretty much on the other side we'll go around the other side and see how to get the channel strips out okay so the next step, the next thing we're going to want to do is remove all of our knobs here. And these just pull straight off pretty easily. Again, it's nice to have these jar caps handy because just drop everything right in there. Oops, and it's pretty easy to put them back on. They go back on easily. Just you can look at the other channels to see which colors go where. And another thing that you'll want to have handy is a, uh, this comes in really handy, is a set of, of nut wrenches. And the only one I really need is the 11 millimeter, which works for all of these nuts on here. Um, and it also works down here below on the the jack, the jack screws, for take, or the jack nuts for taking those off. Um, in a pinch, you can use a seven sixteenths. Um, it will work, but it, this is actually metric. It's eleven millimeter, so we're just going to go down the line and pull all these nuts off of here. And I've got another jar cap for that. Sometimes if these get stuck in here, this is it's good not to take them off all the way, but leave them on partially and take they'll take the last little bit off with your fingers because they get stuck inside of the nut driver. These have been off before, so they come off pretty easily. Maybe if you've had one that's never been off before, the console is 15 years old or older, depending on the environment, it could be a little rusty, but they should, regardless, they should come off pretty without too much difficulty. And when you put them back on, you, you don't want to get them over tight doesn't take a lot of force to hold this channel strip in place. There's no reason to really over tighten them. Unless you play your music so loud that it actually loosens up the nuts. I guess that's possible. Not in my studio though, I value my ears too much. I think I've got them all. If that's all, we feel now oh, we're more here. Okay, so we're pretty loose now. There are, or is, let me see, I think we've got one screw we're dealing with, two screws. So one here, one Phillips screw at the top. I haven't taken one of these off in, you know, a couple of years, so I don't remember exactly. Okay, there we go. There we go. So, oh. And we just need to remove the, the fader cable from right here. That's all that's holding it in. And there we have it. So we didn't take the fader out. You can see the fader is still in there. That's mounted in. So there was one Phillips screw that goes into here. And the fader plugs into. There's a connector that is right here where the fader goes into. And there's our module. So we have it out, and we can service it on the bench if you have a bench handy, which I do, and that will be the next step. The next item on my list that I've made of problems is channel 6, which has a problem with the phantom. So counting over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we can see it's, it's right over here. I think the problem may be in the card here, or it may be up here. I'm going to take a look at the cable. 
Maybe the cable's not properly seated. Can't really tell, but I'm gonna pull this card out anyway and take a look at it. So I'm gonna take these connectors off. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Pull the ribbon cable out. And this has to, and then again, we'll have to take the nuts off from the back side. Then there's also one more. Um, there is a bus cable, and they're numbered. It's an eight bus console, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It starts over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these are the bus buses, and these are the phantoms. So that direct switch on the back, that's, it switches between um, direct output from the channel strip or bus out, one through eight. And it just gives you uh, multiple outputs for, for one through eight. You have another one through eight here all the way down the console. You've got in the master section another one through eight. So if you're doing um, outputs to multiple locations, you've got um, your buses have, you've actually got five bus outputs for every bus. Okay, and here we need to move, remove the, the in-out card, so we're going to move num remove number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll pull the cables out, any cables we have plugged in there. And we'll take our 11 millimeter nut driver. Be careful not to drop any of the, the hardware, and you have to find it later. Normally this is not as difficult as it is right now, but I'm since I have the camera stuck in here, it actually is making it much more difficult than it really typically would be. Now, I get in here, there's two Phillips screws that hold the XLR jack in that need to come out. So that's what I'm taking out right now. And now, we should be able to pull this out from the other side. Okay, the card is, is almost out. There's just one more item that needs to be removed. You can see we have a ground wire. All these have, so that we just take a seven millimeter. Remember this is metric because this console was made in England. And they gave us the standard system with feet and inches and they don't even use it themselves. Okay, there it is, ready to take it to the bench.